Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to look at total average and marginal revenue for firms with market power, so for instance for monopolists or for monopolistically competitive firms. So I do have other videos that address total average and marginal revenue in perfect competition and also as concepts more generally, so I will link to those videos in the description below just in case they're more appropriate for what you want. All right, so if you're still with me, let's start with our definitions. Total revenue is just going to be equal to the price that you sell each good at multiplied by the quantity that you sell. Average revenue is equal to total revenue divided by the quantity you sell. So that's going to be the average revenue per unit. Substituting in P times Q, for total revenue, we see that average revenue is just going to be equal to the price. When we model firms with market power, we're dealing with continuous functions. So marginal revenue is defined as the derivative of the total revenue function with respect to quantity. Technically, when we take a derivative, we're thinking about infinitesimal changes in our variables. So the change in total revenue given a tiny increase in quantity. To make it easy, you can just think about the derivative as the change in total revenue given that we increase quantity by one. So here is our model that shows the pricing decisions of firms with market power. So either monopolists or monopolistically competitive firms. We have our demand curve, our marginal revenue curve and our marginal cost curve. The pricing decision of the monopolist or any firm with market power is to set the quantity such that marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And we're going to charge as much as we can. So we read the price off from the demand curve. So for a particular outcome, the total revenue, which is P times Q will be this rectangle here. The marginal revenue, we just read off from the graph and that's going to be here. And our average revenue is equal to the price. So that's here. So that's my total revenue, marginal revenue and average revenue for one particular outcome. Now we're going to think about finding our total revenue, marginal revenue and average revenue functions, which tell us about these things for all possible quantities that the firm could choose to produce. Now our demand curve, amongst other things, tracks the maximum price that the firm will set for the quantity that they will choose to produce. So for instance, if the firm wants to set this quantity, they will sell that quantity for this price here. If they set this quantity, Q2, they will sell for this price here. They just read the price off the demand curve, or that's our model at least. As we saw before, the price is equal to our average revenue. So it follows that the demand curve not only tracks the price for various levels of production, but it also tracks the average revenue for our various levels of production. So that's why the demand curve is equal to the average revenue curve or the average revenue function. The marginal revenue curve looks like this. It shows the additional revenue associated with producing one more unit as we increase our quantity. There are two things that I'm going to talk about today that are going to help you understand the shape of this curve. The first thing is that when our demand curve is a perfectly straight line, our marginal revenue will always be twice as steep, but have exactly the same price axis intercept as our demand curve. We can demonstrate this by considering a very simple case. Imagine that our demand curve is expressed by the equation Q is equal to 10 minus P. This would be the drawing of the curve here. The first thing I'm going to do is express this equation with the price variable isolated on the left hand side. That means the equation will be in the slope intercept form of the equation of the line and we will be able to see our price axis intercept easily and also our slope. So to do that, I'm going to add P to both sides and take away Q from both sides. 
and we're left with what we call an inverse demand curve, P is equal to 10 minus Q. So you can see the constant here, that's the price axis intercept, it's equal to 10. And the slope is the coefficient on the Q variable, which in this case is negative 1. Recall that marginal revenue is equal to the derivative of the total revenue function with respect to Q and that total revenue is equal to P times Q. Now an easy way to do this is to express our total revenue as a function of only our quantity variable. So substituting in for P, our inverse demand function, into our total revenue function, we're left with total revenue is equal to, well P is equal to 10 minus Q, so we put that in, all multiplied by Q, which is equal to 10Q minus Q squared. So here we have total revenue as a function of only one variable Q. Then we can take the derivative quite easily to get marginal revenue. And if I do that, well, 10Q becomes 10. The exponent 2 comes out the front. We get 2Q and I take 1 off that exponent. So we have marginal revenue is equal to 10 minus 2q. Now you can see quite clearly that our marginal revenue function has the same intercept, price axis intercept, that's 10, and double the slope, negative 2, as our demand function. This is going to mean that our quantity axis intercept for our marginal revenue curve will be exactly half of the quantity axis intercept of our demand curve. So in this case, it will be five. So this is true of the marginal revenue curve for any linear demand curve. You can test it for yourself. The second key to understanding marginal revenue is through connecting the marginal revenue curve to our total revenue curve. So we're going to move on to this set of diagrams here. On the top, I have our demand curve and our marginal revenue curve. And on the bottom, I have our total revenue function. And our total revenue function tells us what happens to total revenue as the firm increases quantity. One thing to note is that the quantity axis intercept of our marginal revenue function, I noted that before, it was halfway between the quantity axis intercept of the demand curve and the origin, well, this point actually corresponds to the midpoint of the demand curve, and it also corresponds to the highest point of our total revenue curve. Before we discuss why, it's important to note that marginal revenue is actually equal to the slope of the total revenue function. To see this, recall that slope is equal to rise over run. So the change in the vertical axis variable divided by the change in the horizontal axis variable. Now it's easy to see that marginal revenue, which is equal to the derivative of the total revenue function with respect to Q, gives us exactly the same ratio that the slope isolates. This is because the derivatives themselves can be interpreted as small changes. And we have on our total revenue diagram, total revenue as the variable on the vertical axis and quantity as our horizontal axis variable. So the first thing to note is that as we increase the quantity that we produce, our total revenue initially increases, though it does so at a decreasing rate. So each additional unit produced adds to our total revenue, but does so at a decreasing rate. Another way to see this is that the slope is always positive in this area, but it goes from steep to quite flat. This increasing total revenue corresponds to this part of the marginal revenue curve, where it starts off as positive and quite high, but then gets quite smaller and smaller in value as we keep on increasing quantity. Right at the midpoint of our demand curve, our total revenue will peak. It will be the maximum of our total revenue. Here, the slope of the total revenue function is zero. And at this point, marginal revenue is equal to zero as well. Then the slope starts to become negative. It will start to slope downwards. This means in this section, each additional quantity that the firm produces leads to a decrease in our total revenue. 
our marginal revenue at this point is actually negative. And if we extend our marginal revenue curve down, you can see that for quantities past this point, the marginal revenue is indeed negative. The reason why total revenue has this shape can be connected to the elasticity of demand. In particular, in this section of our demand curve, where total revenue increases, our demand is elastic. At this midpoint here, our demand is unit elastic. And in this section, where our total revenue decreases, our demand is inelastic. I do have a longer video just on this point of how the elasticity changes along demand curves and also linking our elasticity to our total revenue. So I will, I will link to those videos uh, in the description. So I'll just go through it briefly, but you can think about it like this. In our elastic region, the proportionate changes in quantity are larger than the proportionate changes in price. So as we increase quantity, we're starting from the origin going right, we're going to have to decrease the price in order to sell the additional quantity that we produce. But as I've written here, the overall effect on total revenue is going to be an increase since the positive effect of the increases in quantity dominates or is stronger than the negative effect of lower prices because we're demand elastic. So if we're in the elastic section of our demand, our total revenue will be increasing as we increase Q. At the point of unit elasticity, the proportionate change in quantity is exactly equal to the proportionate change in price. So the positive effect of the increase in quantity produced and traded on total revenue is exactly the same as the negative effect of the decrease in price. So total revenue remains unchanged it neither increases or decreases. In the inelastic section, the proportionate change in quantity is less than the proportionate change in price. So the positive effect of the increase in quantity is dominated or is not as strong as the negative effect of the decrease in price. And so overall, total revenue decreases. And so that's it. I do hope that the video helped. If it did help, please like and subscribe. I've listed some videos below that I've made that go into a little bit more detail on some of the topics we've covered. I hope you guys are having a great day or night.